Hello everyone, I'm Megan from Organize Little Lady and today I am going to be sharing with you my recipe binder. So this is a binder that I put together after several failed attempts at coming up with a system to organize my recipes. I found that when using index cards or recipe cards to organize or notebooks, it was too difficult to add new recipes into that system. I just don't have a ton of time to write new recipes down from start to finish and then add them into my system. So with the binder, it is so easy to add new recipes in and I'm finding this tool has been working out so wonderfully when it comes to meal planning. Okay, so I'm gonna just dive right in and share with you guys how I set this up and how I have it organized. First off, I did use a binder from Walmart. It's just a standard one inch binder size. Um, I have been using this size for, I, I want to say it's been two, maybe three years since I have put this together. And this size is still working out for me. If I do outgrow it, I will simply just adjust to a larger ring. I don't like huge bulky binders though, just because I find that I don't pull from them as often if they're cumbersome. So the cover, I got this from an Etsy shop called Clean Life and Home. She is amazing. This is a customizable recipe binder cover. It comes with the spine and a back cover also. So I just gave her our family name and then she created this cover and sends it to you in a PDF, PDF form. I'm gonna leave her shop linked in the description box below. Definitely check her out. She has some amazing items in her shop. Okay, let's dive in and see what's on the inside. Opening up the binder, there is a pocket here on the left-hand side, and I just keep all of our Blue Apron recipes that we have tried and loved over here. They are very bulky, it's like a cardstock material, so I didn't want to add those into the actual binder section because I just didn't want it to be bulked up too much. So I keep all of those just right here on the left-hand side. Now, I do wanna mention that all the recipes that I have in this binder are tried and true. They are recipes that our family loves and recipes that I pull from when meal planning. I do not want my recipe binder to be overflowing with recipes that we're not going to try or that you know we'll try one day and then they get lost in the shuffle. These are recipes that we have tried that our family loves and that I can go back to and pull from on a regular basis. The first page I have here is just a cooking conversions um, printable. I believe this was also from Clean Life and Home. I think this was actually from her blog and I found it on Pinterest and that's how I discovered her in the first place. I will try to find the link for this as well and leave that in the description box. One thing I will note is that every single page in my binder is in this page protector, clear page protector. And I do that for two reasons. One, for durability, and two, because I do have this out often when I'm cooking. So if food splashes onto it, I can easily wipe it down. So I highly recommend using page protectors if you are going to be putting together a recipe binder. On the back of this page, I just have a fridge and freezer shelf life guide. I believe I got this off of Pinterest as well, and it was a free printable from, let's see, it says down here, Wonder Mom Wannabe Blog. So I, again, just like having this as a quick reference so that way I know how good, how long foods stay in the fridge and freezer. So I think that's just kind of handy to have also. So for the actual recipe portion of my binder, I went ahead and got dividers and categorized my binder in sections that made sense for my family. You can customize this however you want to. I do recommend getting the larger dividers that have a pocket for two reasons. One, just because they are larger. So as you can see, my page protector um, doesn't block the tab. Sometimes if you get the smaller dividers, the page protectors actually cover the tab dividers and you can't see your sections. So these are large enough where you can see the tabs and all the page protectors lie underneath. And I also like that it has a pocket. So that way, if I find a recipe that I love, I will either print it out and stick it in here and try it. And if we don't love it, I toss it. If we do love it, it gets added into my recipe binder. I also have a Pinterest board with recipes and uh, a lot of times I will just use that to try for the first time and it again, if we love it, I'll print it out and add it into my binder. Again, that just keeps all of my tried and true recipes in here and nothing else. 
Okay, so the first section I have is listed chicken. So these are chicken recipes that um, I've gotten from numerous different websites and food blogs and I love this system because you can just print it out and stick it in the page protectors and you're done. You can just easily add recipes into your system. So that is my first section here. It's just all chicken related um, recipes. I really like having these categories because if I, let's say, have two pounds of chicken on hand, I can just refer to the section and say, okay, let's see, what do I wanna make with the chicken? My next section is beef. And again, this is a good example why I like the pocket folders for dividers because there was a recipe that I wanted to add in here for meatballs that we use and it was just on the back of a Parmesan cheese container. And so I didn't wanna use a whole page protector for this. So instead I just stick it right in here and I know that if I wanna make that recipe, that's where it lives. So this is the beef section, and again, all sorts of just different recipes that are um, that use beef as their main ingredient. My next section is pasta, and same thing, just all of my pasta recipes go in this section. My next section is labeled entrees. Now, my idea for this was to use it as if like for entertaining. So if I am going to be making several different things, I want it to specifically um, go to this section to look for my main course meals. Right now, the only recipe I have in here is the perfect turkey recipe for Thanksgiving. But this is kind of my idea for this section and hopefully I will add on to it as time goes on. But for now, I just have a turkey recipe in here. The next section, and probably my favorite because I am the crock pot queen around here, is my crock pot recipe section. So again, I just have all of our tried and true crock pot recipes in one spot. If I'm in a bind or in a rut, I can pull from this and I just love having this all in one place. My next section is soups. All of our soups just go in this section here. My next section is sides. So I find having a dedicated category of sides is very helpful because sometimes, especially like I said, when entertaining, it's good to have a list of sides that you a, know are good when you make them and um, that you can refer to when you are hosting or when you just need to pull together a larger meal. And this next section sort of goes along with that same concept and it's appetizers. Right now, I only have one in there that I thought was worth mentioning and putting in here, and it is the prosciutto asparagus spirals. If you guys have not tried those, they are delicious. This is actually a recipe that I found off of the Pepperidge Farm puff pastry website, and they are delicious, but that was definitely getting put in my binder. This next section is labeled breakfast, and I'm gonna be completely honest, it is completely blank. In our family, we have breakfast sort of on a rotation. We know what we like and we eat usually the same things week after week. So um, I haven't been going outside my comfort zone too much in the breakfast area, but maybe that's something that I will have to add to an upcoming monthly goal is to try new breakfast recipes. This next section is labeled desserts and I really like having this in here. I put a lot of apple desserts in here that I could refer to in the fall. We always go apple picking. I always have a ton of apples left over and now I can refer to this when I want to bake something with the apples or just a dessert in general. The next section is labeled drinks and I have a few recipes in here for making party drinks. And I think this is really helpful again when hosting. It's just kind of some a fun added touch to have a special drink for your guests when you're hosting. And last but not least is my Christmas section. So I absolutely love Christmas. I love baking around Christmas and I knew I wanted to add a Christmas section into my binder to add special recipes and fun things that I wanted to make with the kids. So that is my Christmas section. 
So that's a look at my recipe binder. It is super simple to put together, but like I said, it is just such a great tool when meal planning and when you get in those meal planning ruts and you just don't know what you want to have for dinner and you know, it's just a great tool to pull from. I really recommend using the binder system because it's just easy to add recipes in. Like I said, it's very durable. You can easily take out a recipe if you just wanna use that one. Um, and instead of having the whole binder on your table or countertop, you can just take out the recipe and put it on the counter. And again, it is in these page protectors, so if for some reason food splatters on it or whatnot, you can just wipe it off and it's good to go. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear if you are planning on making a recipe, recipe binder or if you already have one, what categories do you have? Another great thing about this system is that you can constantly be customizing it and adding or taking away um, sections as you figure out what works best for you and your family. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.